Hello, my name is Layla Krauss, and today I'm going to be talking about an introduction to CS50X. First, a little bit about me. So I am a registered dietitian. If you didn't notice, there's an alphabet of letters after my name. That's all that means. I did my education back in 2015 in nutrition and food management, and I've been working as a clinical dietitian ever since then. And clinical really just means I work in a hospital setting and I work with patients. I've worked with adults, I've worked with pediatrics, and most recently I work in the neonatal intensive care unit, so I work with premature babies. I also am an adjunct instructor, so I teach a couple of nutrition classes, and I also volunteer on the board of directors for the Oklahoma Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which is a nonprofit professional organization for nutrition professionals or dietitians. You could think of that as kind of like Techlahoma is to those of you in the tech community. I have two dogs at home. Um, in the back, that's my Dutch Shepherd. He's 12 years old. And then I have a Samoyed. She is two years old, fluffy dog, sheds everywhere. As you can probably imagine, just looking at her, we keep lit rollers in every room, in the car, in my dress desk drawer. Um, I am happily married to my high school sweetheart, and we have an 18-month-old at home that keeps us very busy. So a little bit about how I got started in software development. It all started in February of this year where I had an idea. I wanted to create a calculator that I could actually use in my day job. I worked on the application for just a few days, and I was hooked. I wanted to learn more. So I started with free learning resources online like SoLearn, watched some YouTube videos. I joined Techlahoma, which was very helpful. I learned about Free Code Camp. I started doing a couple courses there. And then in May, around May is when I enrolled in a course called CS50X. And that is the topic of the day. So we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Over the summer, I became a co-organizer for two local user groups, She Codes Oklahoma City and OKC Coffee and Code. So catch me at some of those meetups. And then we have this arrow pointing backwards. So I actually, for my final project in my CS50X course, I'm building ver 2.0 of my calculator, which is super exciting. And of course, shout out to Google and Stack Overflow. So let's get into the talk. Objectives today. So we're going to discuss what CS50 is all about, and we're going to look at some of the problem sets in some of the projects that you can expect in the course, just to give you an idea. And hopefully at the end of this talk, you can decide if this is something that you want to try out for yourself. So CS50, what is it? So CS50X is an intro to computer science. It is a free course. It's about 11 weeks long and it's put out through Harvard. The main instructor is David Malin. He's a phenomenal um, college instructor for computer science and he teaches this course. His lectures are amazing. They're about two to two and a half hours long. You can watch them for free on YouTube or if you enroll in the course, they just embed YouTube in the course itself and you can watch it that way too. As far as how to, what to expect for the layout of the course. So every week you will have usually one lab, typically one to two problem sets, sometimes there's more, and then a final project at the end. You can sign up through EDX, that's how I signed up for the course, so edx.org slash CS50. Um, there are other CS50 courses as well. So CS50X is the what we're going to be talking about today. But if you go to edx.org slash CS50, you'll see intro to web programming. There's a course on game development, artificial intelligence, or AI that you can sign up for as well that are meant to be follow-up courses to the CS50X course. You can actually get a certificate from Harvard as long as you pass with a 70% pass rate on all of your assignments and, and your final project as well. If you want, you can pay to get a certificate through EDX. Um, it's $150 if you so choose to do that. But either way, you get a free certificate through Harvard. So, um, so what can you expect to learn? As far as languages go, you start off right off the bat with Scratch, which is really fun. 
Scratch is a graphical programming language that's really designed for beginners. You can see the little Scratch cat um, logo there. After that, you get into C, which is a low level language, and you actually code in C for several weeks, and you really get to learn the what's going on behind the scenes. You will then move into Python, which is a more high level, popular programming language. You'll learn a little SQL as well, so you get to learn how databases work and database management. And then a little web development too towards the end of the course. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript is touched on. And then your last lecture is actually using Flask, uh, which is a small web framework for Python. And so you get to do a little backend development too. Topics included. So I have some listed here. This is not everything that's covered in the class, but a few things. Abstraction. So how to organize your code and keep from reducing duplication in your code, keeping your code clean. You'll learn about memory allocation, so how memory is managed. Um, you'll learn about pointers a little bit and how to use and free memory. You might ask the question, when you declare a variable, where does it live on your computer? Well, you get to learn that uh, when you learn about memory. Algorithms, you learn the optimal way to actually sort values. Um, you also learn a little bit about big O notation as well. You'll learn about data structures like binary trees, hash tables, linked lists, a little bit on security, so how to prevent SQL injection, and there is some web programming as well. So let's look at some of the problem sets that I did in the 2022 coursework. Scratch, like I said, you start off the bat with Scratch and you basically get to make a game of your choosing, which is really fun. I made a game called Very Hungry, where you are a bear who's very hungry for only berries. And so um, the, the purpose of the game is to eat as many berries as you can without eating a fruit that is not a berry. Otherwise, game over. Game uses arrow keys and the space bar to work more problem sets. So like I mentioned, C is used a, a lot in this course at the beginning. And a lot of the applications you'll be making are using the command line. So you'll see that with these screenshots moving forward. We have on the left, um, a problem set called Mario. And here you enter a value and then it prints out that many hashes. Those hashes represent bricks, kind of like in Mario. And then on the right, you have Caesar. And this is using a simple encryption process. Basically, you provide a key, in this case, 13. You provide some text, hello world, and then it will print out that text once it's been encrypt, um, encrypted. More problem sets in C. Like I said, a lot of C at the beginning. So this was a problem called filter, and you have an image and you get to make it using C code turn that into grayscale, sepia, we have a blurred image and reflect image. This is a very challenging problem. We also have a little bit of C here and some Python. So if you look at the top screenshot, we have um, a problem called speller. And in this problem, you are creating your own spell checker using a hash function. And the goal is to make your hash function as efficient as possible. And on the bottom, we have a actual Python application where um, it, this one was called readability and you enter some text, maybe from a book, in this case, Harry Potter, and it will print out the grade level, the reading level of that text. Um, when you get to learning about Python, they actually have you rebuild most of the problems you already built in C. So you really get to see how simplified Python can make things, but still have that understanding of what's, what's actually going on in the background, which is awesome. SQL, loved this one. Um, this problem was called 50ville and it is a mystery. And so you're basically learning how to navigate tables. So we have an example of what those tables looked like in this problem. And then one of the schema of the tables. You get to do some web programming with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In this problem set, you really get to make whatever you want. Uh, the goal is to make a home page of some sort. I chose to make one about myself. I actually have this up, run, and running on GitHub pages right now if anybody wanted to check it out. And then your last big problem set in the course is using Flask. Um, you're making a finance application called CS50 Finance where you can buy and sell stocks. You actually get to use an API to do this. 
Um, some other things you learn, you learn how to make and create accounts, um, how to hash passwords for security. And then you also get to choose a personal touch for this project. I chose to create a regular expression that I could set specific password requirements. So we've come to the end now. Is CS50X right for you? Well, are you a new developer looking for a challenge? Um, something to note about these problem sets is they usually have an option for a more comfortable or a less comfortable problem. I did mostly less comfortable problems. If you're a, an experienced developer who's wanting to improve your skills, you might choose some of those more comfortable problems or that extra challenge, or you may just wanna watch the lectures for free if you answered yes to either of these questions. And if you did, you can sign up at edx.org slash CS50 um, and get started. Thank you for listening to my lightning talk. Again, my name is Layla Krause. These are ways you can connect with me. I'm on GitHub, I'm on LinkedIn. I also am fairly active in Techlahoma Slack and I would love to connect with you. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day.